Hello friends, we're back to Dark Souls today. So a game about people who are very, uh, very sad. That's because their souls are dark, and that's why it's called Dark Souls. Today we're going to be going into the, uh, um, uh, Sun's Fortress. Up to Sun's Fortress we go. And then we're gonna go fight the big old, uh, Iron Giant guy from that one movie. I think he's like Superman or something. You beat him here and then his little, uh, little boat comes from Antarctica. Up we go. Up we go. Oh hey, now it really is dark. Oh, nope, we're back to light shows again. The moment there, the screen was dark and that was the truest dark show ever was dark. Oh, burp, 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 burp. Time to stop fucking around. And chicken dick. Here we go. So I believe we're up in here. We go to the uh, 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 Iron Giant or go down to Grave Lord Dino. And we're that fucking stupid, so we're going to the Iron Giant because fuck the catacombs. Nobody likes the catacombs. If you like the catacombs, you're a filthy liar. And everyone knows, actually. Uh, I did do a little bit of reading on the wiki. Apparently we can go to the, uh, Great Lord Sif, or whatever it was now. We can break in the Dark Root Garden, because we have the Hawk Ring equipped. But we're not going to do that, because that's like a big uh, spoiler, and I shouldn't do that, but I read the wiki. So let's go up here. Actually, now that I say that, and I think about that out loud, I checked a couple things on the wiki. Uh, the fact that the crest of Artorias is no longer in the game at all, period, means that at this point, without having read that, I would probably just never go back towards Lord Sif or try and come through the uh, Hydra route. Because why the fuck would I... I guess there might have been text that I missed or something, but why the fuck would I ever try and go... Back to the dark root garden door without the crest that I wouldn't know isn't even in this game at this point. It's just weird design design decisions, bro. Weird design decisions. Where was the upper? There's the upway. Where is the up route? I'm too old for this shit and game now. Speaking of too old, get off my balcony, you darn kids. Ha! You stay down there. You know, his head is really tiny. Also, he looks kind of funny standing there like that. Like his feet don't match the ground or something. Nobody to summon. I'm sad. I gotta solo the big giant freaky dude. I'm gonna guess the iron golem is immune to... Ooh, that's big damage. Immune to bleed. Do remember, though, this is a boss that can easily kick you straight off the edge for an instant death attack. Don't remember if he has a foot down attack? Yes, he does. I remember that more specifically from Bloodborne for some reason, even though I don't like that game a whole lot. But the, uh, some kind of big wolf boss that just grabs down between his legs. Oh shit, that was a perfect attack animation time. I forgot you can, like, stagger this dude a little bit, and I don't know if you can actually knock him down or what. Right, well, that was that. Trying to roll and block at the same time does not work well. Oh shit, that's what I was avoiding. I'm dead. Oh no, I'm not. Thanks, Golem. And he's destabilized again. I don't know if that's blunt damage or what, but that was... Ooh, ring, 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 ring. Really easy boss fight. Golem, humanity, 
Tons of shit. Did they put an invisible wall in here, maybe? No. That was always one of my favorite parts of this game, is looking at the different areas in the map and trying to figure out where you could and could not go into. Alright, if we can get to Ann Orlando right now, we're doing it, because... Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> we have to go all the way down into the crypt, and the real problem, all the way back up. And so that's it for Sen's Fortress, everybody, except for the golems down low, but I ain't fighting those, because they're a pain in the neck. Although I guess with the iron ring... Hmm. Yeah, why is the composite bow so expensive? God damn. So you have feather arrows that go further, large arrows that do more damage, but have shorter range. All the bolts. Why don't we get steel armor while we're here, and then steel bolts will be the next guy. I could like the gargoyle helm. And then if I need to have extra uh, defense on anything, we are ready for it. Yeah, you know, while we're here, let's go fuck with some Snake Man. I forgot how far down that is and how much that hurts. Backstab? No, come on, backstab. <sighs> no. You know, we're going to the crypt now. I'm tired, I'm not in the... <laughs> not in the mood for this shit, kids! You know what, on second thought, we're just leaving. I don't care, we're leaving. I need way more stamina to deal with these effectively. I'm not sure where to farm either, because I'm not gonna... use my wiki knowledge to go to Darkroot Basin. But I don't remember where we were getting good souls at any point here. Now this area is open to us, let's go ahead and throw on that ring. Oh, you know what? We could go back to the Undead Asylum and see if we can beat on the big demon, although I think that's going to be another requires more souls issue. So run over here. I don't know what that item is. Roll off. You can also jump, but you can wind up screwing that up, although running off may also be a viable option. Sunlight Elixir, the item that I never use because it's so valuable that I wind up just stashing it forever and never using it. Which happens a lot in games. Because I always feel like it's like, well, I might need that for the next thing later on, or I might need that eventually, and it just becomes the one great consumable item that will never get used. And now we roleplay as a bird for however long it takes. There we go. <clears throat> Take me away, friend. Take me home. <laughs> Just pauses on her weird undead face. Just mouth agape. <laughs> We clearly got real drunk for this flight, because we couldn't handle the airlines. And of course we got kicked off for the airlines for vomiting on everyone. Although, I can't tell if her mouth is open or we just look really stupid. It may just be we look really stupid. Hey you, no, no, that, that was not in your aggro range. These guys are deceptive. It's a dude with a torch, but he swings and hits like a truck. How hard is it for you to run in a straight line? Come on, bro. Not even zigzagging properly, you're just being dumb. Also, you know what? We need the... Oh, we do have the hawk ring on. Never mind. That is an interesting... Oh, no, that's because the hole is open. I thought that was a texture glitch. I 
I love that this game has headshots. Never been able to pull them off well in multiplayer, but it's still a... Just such a silly touch. Also, was it me or was there a weird sound a minute ago out here? Anyway, let's go light up that bonfire. And then check everything else out. So what's his face down there now, or is he been replaced? Or is he hiding? Let's go take a look. Get away. Up oh, there he is. Yeah, janky hitboxes. He hit my shield and recoiled when I was behind him. Because that makes sense. Uh, maybe this is where I should have brought some dung bombs. I don't think he's even taken any damage. But, we have saved. Let us find out. I don't think I can do a drop attack on him either. Okay. That's just straight up not fair. Also, I think, depending on how the game... I think it glitched out when I did it, but supposedly dropping the main demon down there turns that into an arch demon or something, and I only have a stray demon, so... I don't know what I did different or wrong, but something doesn't quite work out right. Also, I didn't look at that health bar. Did he or did he not take any prior damage? They have also fixed the exploit of jump and roll and then dug bomb from the corner because the dung bomb doesn't deal damage to him but it does apply toxic and then you eventually just kill him for free. Which props on you for fixing an exploit but fuck you for removing easy mode. So this guy is a question of that attack which is a shit ton huge magic attack and then dodging through these. If you were anywhere in front of him, there's a bad tendency to do that super huge unfair attack. And you have to figure out your way behind him. I should have the freaking dagger equipped, and I don't. There you can see the actual kind of area of it where. Just run away and circle back in, which is a boss pattern that actually comes up quite a bit. One of my least favorite bosses in Bloodborne was a giant with a hammer and three ball and chains on his back. The reason I hated that was because it was almost impossible to hurt him without him swinging those balls and chains in its massive AoE attack. Because if he missed, the balls and chains came around and hit you too. However, he also became the most disappointing boss when I figured out there was a particular, like, move kind of in a triangle, but the triangle rotates around with his backside, so you're always moving one step in, hit him in the back, one step out, one step in, hit him in the back, one step out, and you permanently stay in one location relative to him, and he never hits you, and you just kind of do that for five minutes and he dies, and it's just really kind of disappointing. Also, this dude likes to fly up and butt slam you to uh, discourage you from doing this, but let's face it, this is the best strat. Because he be slow and chonkers. Which some people don't like in the earlier entries, but I really like the kind of pacing it brings where I'm not always playing an action game, it's a bit more. You know, figure out the optimum strategy and perform it rather than how good are your reflexes, bro. Alright, knife time. Let's see if we can get a bleed on him. Butt slam, ow, right on top of me. 
All right, well, now we know the strategy. Now it's just a matter of grinding through it. So. My bad for not bringing the um, thing he already equipped. What's it called? Dagger. Oh, I forget. Does he have an elemental weakness? It's always a weird thing in games where they give a creature an elemental weakness, but can you really tell what it is, or... You know, is it somewhere deep in lore you have to look at, or is it obvious from looking at it, which... Even Pokémon did a really good job with in some aspects, but some of them were just really confusing, or... The fact that Charizard is, was not a dragon type in the original, he became fire flying, or Gyarados was water flying, and not, you know, giant dragon looking monster isn't a dragon somehow. Although, I guess that has more to do with East vs. West conceptions of dragons and versions rather than just straight up uh, weird design. Well, I think there was something with like fighting and psychic weaknesses being. Kind of counterintuitive or not counterintuitive, just wholly unintuitive what certain things are weak to certain others. Especially when they add things like fairy and steel in. Or, you know, fire, ice, and water. Like, you can boil water away. So, why is water always beating fire? Because a lot of fish are very particular about their uh, temperature, too. I'm going to think of it, a lot of things they portray as opposites in games are often things that will absolutely destroy each other, not a uh, one-way relationship or rock-paper-scissors relationship, although that's kind of a fundamental in many game designs because it's simple to understand and easy for people to wrap their heads around and easy to kind of put a style or balance on. Also, I'm really upset here where I can see the bleed damage going through, but it doesn't give me any pretty numbers. There's something... un... kinda... upsetting about not getting to see my big bleed numbers come through. But you can watch the big yellow bar, there it goes again. With his health, uh, suddenly dropping. But it doesn't show as a number, because there's 84 damage, that's the three dagger hits, and then there's the huge... His health just... went away, hit. There it is again. 84 is nothing, the three hit... There he goes. Get that Ring of Temptation on in time, get the Winged Chaos Mote thing, which I am still disappointed is not a reusable item. Ooh, Red Titanite Slab. So I might have covered it in a previous video, but for anyone who hasn't played this, upgrading your items from 1 to 5 requires 1 material, 6 to 10 requires different material, 11 to 14 a final material, and then 14 to 15 requires a slab, which is... Quite a pain in the neck for anyone that went goes achievement hunting. Because there's usually, I think, only one of a certain slab per game, or it's an extremely low drop on one of them. The hell is this? Omphalic rune? That's new. But, uh... For the achievements, you have to get one of every item. Rune written by Imprisoned Torture and Every upgrade, I should say. So you have to get the Divine upgrade requiring a white slab, and then you have to get the Occult upgrade to 15 requiring a white slab. Same goes for Fire and Chaos damage, where Fire has... Where I don't remember the difference, because I don't know if Fire actually scales off anything, but... Yeah. Rune written by an Imprisoned Tortured Undead Wizard who finally gave into the Dark Sign. It is the fate of the undead to die again and again and again and not, until not a scrap of humanity remains. This rune increases the strength of undead still warm with the ashes of rebirth. No one remains to interpret those these lost words, but the symbol etched into the I runic weapon seems to resonate with their sound. So I'm going to probably look that up online to see what that does. I don't know what the hell that did. Maybe that's something to do with when you come back from dying? 
Let's see about resonating with sound. These lost words, but their symbols etched into runic weapons seem to resonate with their sound. Yeah, so I don't know. Runic weapon? Wait, what? So I guess there's some kind of runic weapons in this game now or something? I don't know. But, uh, no painted doll there, so that's been moved to another location. Painted doll, of course, being an item you need to get to Painted World of Artorias, or something like that. Another side area, but this one, you know, actually findable, because there's a giant freaking painting in the middle of a hall, and you're like, hmm, what's that giant freaking painting for? Right, what did I say? I need endurance. I only get two levels of endurance. Mm -hmm. uh, that ups my equip load, very tiny, but absolutely necessary. Havel's ring is normally what you get from beating Havel early on, and of course they moved him. Here's our buddy from the start, come back from the dead. Which I mean, is how this whole game works, so I don't know what I'm, what I'm craving about that for. I forgot how Dark Souls works. But I normally get Havel's ring early on, and that lets you massive equip load increase. And just wear all the cool armor and all the fancy shit. That reminds me of another thing that people grave about Dark Souls 2 a lot, but I'm pretty sure Dark Souls 2 was the one that let you equip four rings at once, which was always cool. I don't know how I missed this. Or if that was just not there. Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. That can't have been here the first time or wouldn't have missed it. So basically that one is extra miracle damage. So normally these side doors are all closed. Those two are ruined so they'll never open. These two are ruined so they'll never open. And I believe this one was opened on the first time. Oh no, that was closed on the first time through and it normally opens this time. So I guess I gotta come back here with a key in order to view this guy who I believe is a Dark Wraith but I could be wrong. Also, he is way bigger than I remember any of them being so I don't know what's going on there. Also, don't know what key I have or I have to get so we'll have to remember to come back here at some point in the future again. Which is interesting. Also, we need to go pretend to be a baby crow again. Unless we want to trade with Snuggly, which... I think the wiki, I saw something briefly mentioned. There's trade changes to the trades, but I'm not interested in going through that whole thing. Now that I think about it, there's a lot of secrets in this game that really only work or are cool or interesting because you can look them up online. Because trying to figure out all the things you can trade with the crow on your own would be an absurd pain in the neck. Speaking of pain in the neck, I have back pain. Then again, I get to nag my boss with things like, uh... Oh, shit. I didn't even make the pun. And I'm already being punished for it. 9,000 souls, humanity. You know what, viewers, you have to suffer now too if I'm suffering. So I went to a foot doctor the other day. He was a really nice man. I think he was a German. And you know he's nice because he's very polite, especially when you're leaving the office. He always makes sure to tell people, Auf Wiedersehen. Ow, tough audience. Holy shit. That joke wasn't that bad. Okay, maybe it was. Hey, instant transportation. Let's not follow our death this time. Let's... Okay, that time I get to hit there and live. Fucking bullshit game. Oh, Frampt's back, by the way. Or here. Hey, Frampt. Yeah, sure, whatever. Shut up, plot device. 
Nobody likes you. Valley of the Drakes has good souls, but that's a pain to get through. Uh, you all, I really wish, would sell me some shit. So we don't need any bleeding weapons, because skeletons do not, unfortunately, bleed. We do need Blessed Club. I think I remember it was either this game or one of the later ones in the series, but someone did testing. It may have been may have been Dark Souls 3, because that was Fashion Souls, but maybe all of them. Anyway, if you have no armor in a slot, you take bonus damage, which is why it was really hard to figure out whether armor even does anything for you or not. Because if you're naked, you'd think that's your default, you have zero armor on, and so you can use that as a baseline for calculations. But no, if you're naked, you have less you have less than zero effective armor or you have a bonus damage that throws off all your calculations. So really, you have to compare everything to, where are all the skeletons? And why are you here now? Okay, this is weird, bro. Oh, have my guests, I will be, so it was. Oh, middle. Hmm. Come again. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm? You look times are grim. At least you don't you dare me. You might scare her. Screw you, I'm talking to your lady. You are you leave no time to fraternize. Alright, shut up and go away. I'll see you in the tomb of giants. Uh I don't know where my train of thought was. But I know I need souls to buy all the miracles and stuff because I just love them. Collecting all the things in case I decide to build into them later, even though I know I won't. Also, I really appreciate the removing of those stupid screaming skull things from here, because they just come near you, explode, and then that's it. That's all they do. And I guess it's time to use this shitty bonfire. In fact, we're going to use a humanity too, because we want to see if there's any uh, invaders or summons in here. Oh, I didn't even light this last time I was down here. Apparently that's how, that's how much I hate this place. Not because it's bad or anything, not because it's scary, just... A frustrating place to deal with if you were ill-equipped and... Kind of annoying if you don't have the Lord Vessel and you have to walk all the way back up because the game will not let you get the Lord Vessel before now, unlike the main game. Because this is some bullshit. Yo dog, where are your skellies at? Ow. Fine. Fight your skeleton, man. Okay, that's not fair. I was backstab. I hit the... Fine. Fuck you. Jeez. Come at me now, bro. Are you really retreating now? <laughs> oh, that feels good. One shot, skelly man. One shot. Also, fun fact: these guys have a rare drop of the necromancer skull he's holding, but there's only like five of them in a run, and they don't respawn. So it's a real pain in the neck to try and get that. What even are these things? Leeches? I don't remember there being a ton of those here before, but I also don't remember looking around that probably before. So that opens the route into the long, boring, dark catacombs. Here we go! Ooh, bone chimney. The burial vaults. I don't remember seeing that up there before. Maybe I never look or took a look around. That does look nice. I do remember the waterfall being there. Okay, that's new. Where's my bow and arrow? There are not normally that many of these guys here. Which is kind of cool, because... I can snipe you when you can't see me. I can snipe you and headshot galore. Oh, that wasn't a headshot. That's headshot. Free shot headshot, baby.
I love it when the enemies don't move when they get hit in the face. And then I think these two skeletons just died because you can see the skull moving. I believe that means they would have spawned from the necromancer, but because the ne necromancer attached to them died. What are you even shooting at, buddy? Because the necromancer attached to them died, they will not come up and they are permanently defeated. What the hell was that? Something either exploded or shook the screen, and I don't know what that was. Yeah, no normally in the main game... Oh look, there's the spike bridge that we can't go across. Oh look, there's another necromancer we can shoot in the face. Normally in the main game, I believe you have to kill the skeletons regardless of whether the necromancer is there. So I don't know why they're collapsing unless they already counted as dead or something. I could be wrong though, I don't really care. This is actually a lot more pleasant. Maybe it's because they have the brightness turned up a little bit beyond normal or beyond recommended. Hey! Oh! You here! You here! You die. No, I don't care about the invader. Give me my crystal lizard. Give me my crystal lizard. Yeah, crystal lizard. And he has one soul, so he's probably canonically the only thing in this game that is a normal thing. Also, where is this shitty invader? Oh, hi, buddy. You die. Two, two, three, four. There's the invader. Oh, it's Petrus, or what, whatever his face is. It's Mr. I'm gonna bring my lady down here. Well, Mr. Bring my lady down here, you can take a stab in the back. In fact, irony! Kill you with holy damage. Oh. Irony! Kill you with holy damage. Also you. Kill you with holy damage, which makes sense. And now you can't revive and you got holy damage. Stop using force. It's obnoxious. And there's a skeleton forming behind me. How much friggin' stamina do you have to block with, you jerk? Not like you even do damage. Oh, he's doing bleed damage because he has a mace like I do. 122 holy damage, bro. Come at me, preacher boy. It's a jump attack. Alright, maybe mace is better. Maybe we'll do the finishing blow with holy damage. There we go. Dark Spirit depraved apostate was vanquished. Remaining power of Dark Spirit, that's new. We got humanity from that, that's interesting. Oh, another one of you. Hey buddy, you wanna see my Z targeting? Even though I don't have a Z button, because this is a PS4 controller. Come at me, bro. Oh, you can't, because you're dead. Normally somewhere there's big, giant, skelly man. Is this one of the areas you smash the ground on? No, those all have a mound, I think. Other little, like, fun little adventuring stuff like that I enjoy in this game, where it's... Rather than an invisible wall, you see a grave on the ground and you hit it with your sword and it opens. Just cool little adventure mechanics like that are always really some of the best parts of these games. Where it's not just about combat or, you know, leveling up or grinding or other stuff. It's small little things that feel like you're on an Indiana Jones adventure or doing a little puzzle thing. These are the guys I was talking about earlier. These guys suck. They do that. They explode and scream. Also knock you off of ledges if you are somehow too close. Also, this is where Patches is going to show up and kill us. Because Patches is a dick. Got nothing here. Oh, I saw that. That is normally a bonfire in there, and there was 
Necromancer in there, I think. Pretty sure I saw a Necromancer, I could be wrong. Uh, did I just flip this the wrong way? I guess I did. Oops. Or is that on a timer? I better watch that. No, because I saw that going flat, didn't I? See, now it's flat. Let's get over there and watch carefully, because if that's on a timer, I'm going to be pissed. Ow! I know that's not on a timer. Weird. Plenty of little shortcuts here you can jump down to. We're going to take a normal route. Here is one of the things I mentioned on the left side. You can see the ground is different. You hit that, you open up a hole. That hole will lead you around places and let you do stuff. Ow! Rude! Hey, headshots with the Z targeting. Ow. Well, your skeleton died with you, and I need to redo my Estus flasks now. You both suck. They have actually made this significantly less frustrating. I appreciate that. Normally it's a long slog through a bunch of skeletons and a few hidden necromancers here and there where... <laughs> I loved that. Just seeing them get up to fold out and die. Normally it's a long slog and you have to bring a divine weapon. If you don't know that, it's a pain in the neck and yada yada yada. I believe this is way the way down to the... Yep. That is the way down to the fire blacksmith. And it looks like my options are that or the secret tunnel. So we're going to use the secret tunnel. Or, you know, jumping down shortcut routes, which... I kind of want 100% this area now that it's not a freaking mess. And normally I think there's a crystal lizard down this nightmare hole. But maybe not anymore. Ow. I don't even do that much damage. Why do you exist? Oh, I guess that makes sense with what I said with the Indiana drone straps earlier. Alrighty, and you get up here. Oh, I don't have Estus. Ha! Smash hole, fall down, and we're back over here, which is not where I was hoping to wind up. So, do I have anything that does a little bit of healing? Lost Cleric Soul. I hope there's a point where you can buy some of these souls. Because I like that they have the little healing thing, which is similar to the healing gems in Dark Souls 2, but slightly different. Oh, hell no. They put demons in here? You're not supposed to show up until way later. Oh, how is he already hurt, too? Is that what the vibration was? Was something exploding down there? Maybe. Can he jump off to his death, please? Fall into an abyss? There's two of them there, I think. Well, in any case, we're not going that way. Uh, I'm not taking... You know what, I'm going to go down here. Ah, uh, that almost ended very horribly. This is ending horribly. Backstab, come on, backstab. Fuck you. Oh, god damn it. Well, now we get to find out if the necromancers respawn or not. Also, what was that in Soul Titanite? That is not a normal thing. Maybe that's the rune weapon upgrade they were talking about. I saw that health bar. Was that the skeletons dying, or was that you being in here again? Okay, good. The necromancers are still gone permanently from your gameplay, which is... Mwah, wonderful. I love it. 
Which also means this isn't a shithole anymore because you can now actually make progress and then just keep on going. Oh no, I spoke too soon. You are back. Some of you are permanently gone. Some of you are returning friends. Hop in! Oh, you are kidding me. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm gonna say, can I shoot with the other hand? But apparently I can shoot straight through here, so it doesn't matter. So a lot of these guys do come back, so do their friends. The four hit combo kills you, it kills your skelly bands. Who else do I need to look out for while I'm in here? Who else has chosen to respawn and face my wrath? Ow! Jump in! There we go, one jump attack, one main attack, that'll finish him. I'm also getting a good amount of humanity from them, which is nice. And now that I say that, I should have uh, buffed up that bonfire. There's those stupid floating skulls again. There we go. Sinner's Key. I bet that leads us to the undead asylum door that I wanted. So we may check there on the next episode. I'll end it soon. Oh, you know what's going to be funny? Can't hit this down, no, no, no. Wait, where did you go? Where did your friend go? Up, oh, he's still shooting from somewhere. Sadly, you cannot shoot on the move. Thankfully, you can interrupt his constant attacks with your own constant attacks. There go both of your skelly mans, and screw you, buddy. So let's grab our souls, open the door. By all rights, I should homeward bone, but instead we gonna try this. Now, where did I want to land? That's right, they have that bullshit in place. I forgot about that. Alright, so we're behind the waterfall. They've, I was right, there's a dude here. Skull Lantern, thankfully. Priest set. Uh, unfortunately, no bonfire to rest up at. Ow, ow. I don't remember where the switch for this bridge is, and I need to go get my souls back. Although there is a shortcut, but then that circumvents my souls, so... I gotta say, precision aiming is really hard with a bow. Thank god those two guys did not come awake right next to me. <laughs> Here's our friend's body. There's another necromancer where we were a minute ago. So if I remember correctly, this one you don't... Yeah, you don't roll off that one. And then from here, I believe you can survive the drop. Although, it may be better with no equipment on. There we go. And this guy opens a doorway for you. Focus. 
Skeleton Blacksmith, everyone. Insert applause here. Ooh. So this guy will let you use uh, fire upgrades, which remove all scaling, but you do fire damage with your hits. Just repair everything we have, and then we'll probably homeward bone, reinforce some stuff, and then continue on in the next episode, because I'm not fighting those stupid skeleton pinwheels if they're down here. In fact, let's get our homeward bone ready. Are they still here? Do they still exist in this nonsense? Ah, crystal lizard. That's a trap. That's a trap. That's a trap. I knew that was a trap. They're still here. That's a trap. It's a trap. Screw you guys. I'm going home. So for anyone who hasn't played it, the uh, skeleton pinwheels, spin wheels, whatever, the skeleton dudes with the wheels hanging around there that you briefly got a glimpse of are the most obnoxious enemy in this game and probably the whole series because what they do is they roll towards you and multiple times per second you get hit by their pinwheel for a good chunk of damage even if you have a shield up it the shields I have right now you'll take chip damage through if you're strong enough for a stronger shield you might or if you can have a tower shield or something that remove, that does 100% physical damage reduction, you still have the problem of them hitting you so much and so often it will usually break your endurance, especially if you are here at any point early in the game or before significantly higher level. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. And I guess we're going to the either deeper down into the tomb or all the way to the Tomb of Giants. Although we did see those two demon gargoyle guys down there. Maybe killing them will take us up top. Maybe it won't. We'll see. So next episode I will check out the Undead Asylum again. And then see if that key opens anything. In the meantime, also head down in here. See you next time. Bye.